wonder what is um, the best time for love or um, the best time to raise significance relative to the male and the female. Well, as it would happen on this coming Sunday, which is in the month of uh, April, uh, we're, we're privileged to be sharing um, Women's Day, uh, the life of women within our own congregation. Now, earlier this month, uh, they celebrated uh, the significance of pastor because it was birthday time for yours truly. Uh, I, I've reached that... Uh, three score year and ten so it was highly significant that we would um, highlight um, this male uh, Pastor Joyner but I do have a female as my my spiritual and natural companion my wife um, on next year, which will be 2024, it will be the celebration of our 50th year in marriage. And this year, Mrs. Joyner, since she is tribe leader of uh, the tribe of uh, April, uh, Women's Day is going to be the closing celebration of this month. Uh, and uh, I didn't think I, sh I, I should allow my wife uh, to uh, chair the closing worship experience that highlights women uh, if since I've been celebrated this month and I could not celebrate the woman that the Lord has uh, placed at my side, and and and, and that uh, that that place of origin is uh, quite significant. That I would not uh, go into the Scripture, which is uh, Genesis chapter two, verses twenty one through twenty five, and highlight the significance of the first woman that uh, became the trailblazing woman in the, um, the mentioning of males and female in the origin of the universe, the origin that God created himself. So bid me, if, if it will, if you will, uh, to talk about in quest of his image in the woman. And I'm drawing from Genesis chapter 2, verse uh, 21 through 25, as it read, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs, or God took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh thereof instead. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Uh, when God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, divine surgery opened to humankind the greatest source of help that man would ever know and appreciate that of Eve, the mother of all nations. 
the name Eve means to give promise for life, to make alive, or to cause to live. Her function, her role, is made clear by God in verse 18 as he says, She will be a help meet to Adam. Help meet is one who aids, one who suckles or furnishes relief as well as support. Eve would hold a very unique and irreplaceable place in the life of Adam. She will help him to become fully human and complete in his initiatives of godly pursuits. A unique quality of this particular instance is the quality of Eve's origin. God took one of Adam's ribs to make Eve but the setting becomes quite significant when this origin of Eve emerges as the first, in a sense, procreative nature that God produced out of and through man. The rib is one of the paired curvy, bony rods that stiffen the walls of the body and protects the internal organs of the body. Eve became Adam's extracted internal protection. She would protect him from the forces which would seek to cause him harm. She would also be that necessary placed help to ward off incoming misleading diversions. God did not give Adam help from outside of himself, but rather he went inside into Adam and brought out of him that needed help. That which was a necessary part of Adam's physical body would be made to be a necessary part of his emotional well-being. Adam's emotional stability was being looked at and considered by God, and God reflects this very, very sensitive compliment for Adam. While the other created beings of earth were complimented by a member of the opposite sex, God saw to it that the emotional level of earth's superintendent would remain balanced. This balanced state of preservation for Adam is similar to that traverse member in the frame of a ship that runs from the keel to the deck. That stability maker is called a rib. It is also likened to a light structure used in an airplane's wing. That too is called a rib. The woman in Adam's life is similar to one of the stiff strips supporting an umbrella's fabric 
that is called a rib. And now in each one of these descriptions, the place of the rib brings qualified balance and protects that in which it is attached to so it can fulfill its usefulness. So it is with the place of Eve, the woman, the wife of Adam. She is that necessary link in the structure of Adam's standards to enable him to be all that he has been intended to be. Adam's stabilizer was Eve. And since Eve's arrival, man has not been the same. I imagine that uh, Adam was in the process of being awakened when God brings his newest member of creation to be introduced to Adam. All he remembers is going to sleep. A deep sleep, the scripture recall, records. Uh, deeper than he had ever imagined. The sleep that would take a God ability to awaken him from. What was his state of mind, his recognition when his eyes met his similar creature as he? Here is a gift to Adam being brought by God. To clarify the situation, God supplies needed assistance as Adam wiped his eyes and beheld Eve, God added needed commentary. Adam, do you remember when you went to sleep? Yes, God. Well, you went to sleep alone, but as you have awakened here, here is someone you will be waking up to from now on. Where did she come from? He may have asked. Well, you see here, and that's God pointing to Adam's rib cage. I took one of your ribs and made her for you. Her hair is a bit longer. Her skin is a bit softer. Her body is a bit curvier. Her voice is a bit lighter. Her physical strength is a bit milder. And she is able to compliment you and me in providing the avenue to populate the earth. The book says, And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion check this over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth that's verse 28 Eden now had its first human couple this couple had place and standing with God and given prescriptions 
by God. In addition, we see where Adam has something very definitive to say about his new mate. He says, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Integral to the life of Adam was now visible, real, in Eve. Here is the key area of male-female relations. And what is visible in Eve is directly taken from Adam. It is not a relationship based on separate from, but rather made from. It is not the work of any human initiative. It is the supreme act of God. And what God used to give man structure, he took out of man and gave Eve structure. Adam and Eve, male and female, are inextricably bound by the rib of interrelatedness. The rib cannot be denied. It is the help of both, the protection of equals, the link of God in both. Flesh of my flesh is more than skin identity. However, the dust that Adam was made of was the same African soil Eve was made of. And when the phrase flesh of my flesh is used, it really says person of my person, existence of my existence essence of my essence. In other words, Adam exists to give Eve existence. On earth, there is no one else to image one another in their uniqueness, complimenting one another was found in each other. The prerogative and strategic emphaticness of God has ordered a specific compliment, a you out of me, which has given a completeness to one another. And all that God intended to be found in man was placed in Adam and all he intended for woman was placed in Eve. Then the mutual complement of one another is found in each other. This is God created orderliness inherent in this covenant relationship. No aberration, no alternative lifestyle, no misrepresentations of hormones, no twisted values and morals, no misconstrued human psychotic variations. Male and female created he them. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Woman depicts liberation of God for man. She liberates him from idleness and provides the solutions God intended in his loneliness. 
the grass, the trees, the animals, and other fascinations of earth could do but so much for Adam. So God made a help meet for him. Out of that rib, God put enough Eve in it for Adam. And because of that rib, it was enough of Adam to make the completeness of Eve. No other insight we glean from this rib extraction by God from Adam. When God took that rib out of Adam, he made Eve. He took the Eve-ness out of the man. In other words, God took out of man what could make him a woman. Homosexuality is not derived from biology. It is a byproduct of environment outside of the body. Woman describes the ideal of God to complement man. She is called woe man to reverence her existence. She was taken out of the human image created to fulfill the likeness of God. This Trinitarian foundation is pivotal in the exclusive needs of the human structure, female and woe man. They carry very pro profound designations for the purposes to be fulfilled by Eve. Though with similar structure, the difference she is endowed with adds substance to the reproductive process which will operate in humankind, Eve is called female because she is endowed with a womb which will be the home of the impregnated egg when the sperm from Adam will fertilize it. The home of the impregnated egg is called the fetus. And though similar in structure, the inherent difference Adam and Eve finds evident lies in the function of their structures, which God has placed in us to populate the earth through the creation of families. The female has a fetus, the woman has a womb. The male man has sperm or the seed for the fertilization of the egg of the female, the woman. The male man serves as the source, the cedar of life, while the female serves as the human incubator for the development of that seed. So one cannot function without the other. God's wisdom is awesome. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is the origination and backbone of creation. And as such, they transfer themselves into a male figure to provide oversight of creation. In man's finitude, he had no equal to complement him in this awesome task. Thus, creation's originator put man to sleep, extracts a rib, and, fact, and fashions a female, a woman, to balance the existence of Adam. God's purpose and place of Eve is transferred in initial words of communication to Eve in bringing identity to her. 
the identity is the wholesome proviso for the existence and completeness of humankind, partners in principle, bone of my bone, partners in purpose, flesh of my flesh, and partners in an empowered promise because she was taken out of man. Every family must exist from the principles of God. Heaven's family must inform our families. The principles of his words must inform our families. The principles of his words must be the detailed formulas for our families. Every family must exist within the purpose outlined by God. Adam and Eve, because the human partners placed in the earth by God to dramatize his purpose, fruitfulness, turning the barren into bounty, the sparse into plenteous, the not yet born into inhabitants of excellence was their command. Purpose yet moves into the area of multiplying. And one of the first things noticed by both Adam and Eve is that they are the first examples of what this command outlines. The wisdom of God has provided the first variables in the equation of multiplication, having something to work with in order that multiplication can take place. The Eden of earth should carry this call of increase throughout the ages of time, and it does. From the partnership of Adam and Eve, worship of God, has multiplied. Fellowship between God and man has evolved. And the friendship of man to man is a byproduct. Their purpose has precipitated increase, abundance, authority, examples, nourishment for families, the continuity between friends and associates as well as acquaintances, working relations between those of the opposite sex have continued, enlarging arrangements in society has precipitated, the wide range of purpose as Eve has come is a new wonder to give God thanks for. Then the empowered promise because of the partnership is a glaring tribute. What do I mean by empowered promise? Well, ever since Eve made from the rib of Adam, God has used this means to reproduce mankind again and again, their partnership was totally authored by God, sanctioned by the Trinity, and destined by their adherence to his directives. Out of Adam, as a result of Adam, because of one called Adam, Eve has come. Eve came out of Adam. Her Eveness had to be fashioned by God, his will, his intent. She did not destine her own existence, decide to chart her own course. She was taken out of. The rudiment of her existence was derived out of life which already 
existed. And whenever a woman really recognizes her existence, it should be awesomely clear that she would not exist if for God working with the rib. And work with the rib, he did and he does. For because of that rib being fashioned the way he has it, we have bright futures and have brighter tomorrows. The partnership of Adam and Eve has been an evolving one. Don't let anyone misrepresent it. They have gone from bones and flesh to man and woman. Verse 24 gives us another step in that relationship. It is the step of marriage. Therefore shall a man clee or leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Not until Eve became present did marriage ever exist between humans. Here we see what God through Eve has caused to become. The word therefore presents us with a determined direction as a result of God's imposed partnership. And when Eve shows up, it inevitably make Adam want to leave home, leave father and mother to be with her. Eve provides a kind of rib orientation. Her womanly disposition allows Adam to become so comfortable with her that where she is, that is where he wants to be. He wants to be where his rib is. He is safe. He is secure because of Eve. And when leaving home for Adam becomes a choice to be made, he then decides to cleave unto his wife. Here, Eve moves from woman to wife. So every Eve must be woman enough to become a wife. And the potential of you becoming a wife is in your womanhood. The only textual evidence of this is when God puts your Adam to sleep, takes his rib out of him, and fashions that rib into you. You then are brought by God to Adam and then express the spark of fire of your presence, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Womanhood is being God's woman but precedes becoming a wife. Now there are instances which may have prevailed outside of this principle but womanhood is a godly prerequisite to becoming a wife. Any woman who makes a man want to leave from one setting of nurture and nurtured comfort and care to pursue life with her has pre represented the rib of God well. A well done is the addendum we could shout about. So this translation of life is occasion because of Eve. She helps as man becomes mature enough to want to move from 
interdependence with his immediate family to become independent with her and they become dependent on each other and build a wider form of interdependence in society. The translation is biblically called to cleave. It readily means to be joined together and to stick. So being joined together is known as marriage where the goal of becoming one flesh is worked on as the ultimate achievement. Two becoming one is achievably when ribology has caused marriage. Pre-oneness is the first step in this covenant relationship. The process God took Adam through in bringing forth Eve is the pre-oneness we refer to. Pre-oneness. It gets the stage from what's going to happen a little later for it sets the stage for marriage. It is called courtship. But when God has preconditioned the relationship through the real process, it is truly a marriage made in heaven. And what God has joined together, nothing can sever it. So finally, verse 25 gives us a picture with lessons which should never be forgotten in a marriage. Don't forget. It says that, and they, Adam and Eve, were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. What about the nakedness? Immediately, one would think of the bliss of creation, the environment of Eden. No other people were around and no need to have this protection. But on a deeper level, Adam and Eve were both naked. And as a couple, man and wife, partners for life in order to maintain their gifted unity, they had to be naked. In other words, husbands and wives should remain naked, have nothing to hide, no secrets, open with each other, comfortable with one another, no marriage or any relationship can last very long if it is always confronted with some kind of cover-up. <laughs> some kind of cover-up. Blessings rest upon you, my brother. Blessings rest upon you, my sister. And may what God has joined together, let no, no nothing, separated from one another. There's also a gift I would uh, like to pass on uh, to uh, the couples that are yet couples right now and the husbands and wife that um, are walking together hand in hand. Here is from Psalm 20, no, Psalm 45. That in which will help you to smell one another and know the difference as to who made that smell difference. Because it is the oil of gladness. It is the oil of gladness. It is the oil of gladness. It <laughs> is the oil of gladness. You can enjoy one another with this oil of gladness. Myrrh. Alos and Cassia. Psalm 45, 
verses 7 and 8. So go on and rub some oil on one another and enjoy one another in some new dimensions that the scripture outlines. And the two became one flesh. Uh, looking forward to you you're talking to me. Brother Ronnie has put uh, my email address as to how we can stay together. And if this teaching has nurtured an even more wholesome uh, marriage before you, why not plant a seed in where possibly these words came alive so that you will stay alive in your relationship? Look forward to hearing from you. Drop me a line at P.O. Box 1446, Norfolk, Virginia, 23501. And let this priestly word provide a queenly dimension. And let's see the difference God's oneness makes. Until the next time, may the love of God be yours.